Hi, I'm Rahil Filipos and you are listening to Three Things, the Indian Express News Show. One of the main crops that farmers in Jharkhand rely on is paddy. It's a crop that supports the agricultural economy of the state and as you can imagine, it's extremely important to the farmers. But this is also a crop that is heavily dependent on rain. And the problem is that for some time now, Jharkhand has been heavily prone to droughts. In 2022, for example, Jharkhand suffered its worst drought in 122 years. And this was during the paddy sowing season, which affected the farmers a lot. Now, it is to help farmers who suffered from such problems that back in 2006, the central government had launched the Per Drop More Crop Scheme which is supposed to help farmers use drip irrigation, a method that saves water and helps boost plant growth. When we spoke to the Indian Express's Abhishek Angad, he told us more about the scheme. This scheme is essentially one of the components of Pradhan Mantri Kisi Sichai Yojana. What does it do? It gives farmers certain equipment, pipes, lateral pipes, to actually spread it across in their farm and says, hey, look, you used to use storm water or water through tube wells or for farming why don't you try drip irrigation and see if it works or not we will give you 90 percent subsidy you just have to pay 10 percent and see in how it works out he says that through this method the productivity of the farmer is supposed to double while the water use efficiency is supposed to increase by close to 70 percent and uh, thereby it also has a cascading effect the energy costs are low and the labor costs are also very low because it doesn't require too much of manpower so the initial idea was of course to adopt this technology and increase the farmer productivity because it's been done in several other countries and of course india is a place where jharkhand pacific where uh, we only have a monsoon fed agriculture and that to paddy so essentially places where water is not in sufficient quantity the drip water was introduced to sort of maintain a balance so that farmers also can do the produce. Now, although the scheme was launched by the central government in 2006, it was implemented in Jharkhand only in 2011. And its implementation is what Abhishek investigated recently. And what he found out is what we will be talking about in today's episode. So this entire investigation has two parts. One is about the scheme in itself and of course the implementation. Second is about how Aadhaar, which is of course created to block or stop the pilferage and uh, create transparency and bring accountability in the system and how its misuse is again leading to a lot of corruption problems and how and why the state government is not doing anything about it. We found out in our investigation that how the Aadhaar cards were being misused to create those beneficiaries, the equipments which were given to them were actually just dumped to people and the very egregious part is that the farmers are not even aware that the private companies have collected their details, their names, but they are not the actual beneficiaries, but they are beneficiaries on the paper. So our investigation followed this. He says that the investigation actually started a year ago. Back then, while talking to farmers for other stories, he noticed that they were not actually using the drip irrigation pipes that the per drop more crop scheme offered. Then I realized that actually they did not need it and there was no water. So what I realized, uh, agriculture department initially has never published the, um, or made uh, the drip farmers, the beneficiaries public. So there was no public data, number one. Number two, there is a solid four-step verification process that goes into ensuring that the right amount of farmer, they get the initial benefit. So it required quite a lot of uh, legwork going into agriculture department and looking into the data and trying to make a source and ultimately it paid off. And after, let's say, a year of source building, I was able to get the data of one particular district that was Hazaribagh, who were the beneficiaries and who were the companies which had installed a drip irrigation system. Now, before and after installing the drip irrigation system, the farmers have to go through an extensive four-step verification process, at least on paper. And the first step of this process is to identify whether there are farmers who are interested in getting the drip system and if they have enough training to implement the scheme. And in Jharkhand, private companies are entrusted with finding out the interested parties. 
So what they do is, let's say in particular place, they approaches some of the agents and says them, Ki, you get me 10 farmers or 20 farmers, you'll get 6% of the cut per unit installation. So now what happens is that agent particularly approaches that farmer and convinces them, look, drip is very good. And if you take it, you'll get pipes, you'll get laterals and a lot of productivity can be done. And you will just have to pay a very 10% of the amount because 90% is the subsidized rate, which is being given to you. So once the farmer agrees, the agent gives that list to the company. Now these individual companies, they upload the farmer's data on uh, per drop, more crop, micro irrigation, Jharkhand government's port where particular district agriculture office decides which company will get how much work order in particular area. So this is how the installation takes place. And after the companies have identified the farmer and installed the drip irrigation system, the farmers have to send a satisfaction letter to a government subsidiary. Now to understand what was happening on the ground, Abhishek had to cross-check the data he received from the Hazaribagh district with the data that this particular government subsidiary received. So once we got the data, we went looking for a pattern. We found which are the villages or blocks where a lot of people have been benefiting and a lot of people from the same community have been benefiting. And uh, there's a very uh, peculiar kind of uh, pattern as in if there's a, some people from, let's say, Yadav community at stretch seven or eight beneficiaries who are from Yadav community. So a lot of people from the same community have been given the entire drip and it's close to 20 acres or 25 acres or 30 acres of land. And and they may be related also. So it may be that the entire chain is from one family, which also shouldn't happen. And now after filtering through the data, Abhishek visited 94 beneficiaries in three blocks and the panchayats there. And he found that in these places, Aadhaar cards were being widely misused, with at least 60 beneficiaries saying that they were misled into signing up for the scheme. For example, Lalji Thakur, who is in uh, his late 60s, early 70s, and uh, he is a farmer, but he doesn't do farming on his own. And he does not even have half acre of land on his own name. When we go there, when we find him, he says on his name, more than four acres that been installed under drip. So just to be clear, a man who does not even have an acre of land had on paper got drip irrigation installed on more than four acres of land. Abhishek then also checked the man's Aadhaar. And then we cross-referenced it with the data that our source provided on what went into verification. So when we went again a step further, we found that the Aadhaar of Mr. Lalji Thakur was photoshopped. Someone else stood for him in verification. Abhishek found out no biometric verification had happened to ensure the man who was applying for the drip irrigation system was in fact Lalji Thakur. Turns out someone had simply used his Aadhaar number. Lalji Thakur later told him that he had given his car to someone who promised to enroll him under a government scheme, but he had no idea what the scheme was. And Abhishek says Lalji Thakur's case is not the only one. In many cases, Aadhaar data was actually stolen from people who were not willing to enroll in the per drop more crop scheme. Take for example Arjun Singh, he's from Chaparan block in uh, Hazaribagh and he realizes when I approach him that look you are a beneficiary under the scheme of two acres and, and your land is in drip. He said yes, an agent approached him and told him that aap 3500 de dijiye ya 1500 de dijiye, He said boss, I don't have any use of drip irrigation, I don't need it. That was the end of the conversation but the agent or the middleman kept on persisting for his Aadhaar card, he, he refused to give. But somehow his Aadhaar card went into that particular scheme and his name was there. I आधार कार्ड क्या उन्होंने मांग किया आधार कार्ड हम बोले हमारे पास आधार कार्ड क्यों दिया वो जन मेरे लिए आधार कार्ड क्यों दिया अब पता नहीं आधार कार्ड से लिंक कैसे किए हैं वो हो सकता है फर्स्ट टाइम में एंड इन द वेरिफिकेशन प्रोसेस देयर वाज समवन एल्स हु स्टूड एंड व्हेन आई शोड हिम द पिक्चर ऑफ दैट पर्सन हु स्टूड ही सेड कि वी डोंट नो ही इज नॉट फ्रॉम इवन फ्रॉम दिस लोकेलिटी सो दिस इज द काइंड ऑफ फ्रॉड एंड हाउ द आधार कार्ड वाज मिसयूज्ड and uh, there was fraud after fraud that was committed as in the fake beneficiaries or bogus beneficiaries. Now there are separate kind of bogus beneficiaries where the beneficiaries actually knew that something was happening but what was happening was they did not know what is the extent of the irregularity that they are being involved in. 
because of course some of the middlemen had actually fed some of the farmers that if someone comes to show you if someone comes to ask tell them about this and say that okay yes we are the beneficiary of xyz scheme aur hum log kar rahe hain kheti but when you ask them ki aap kahan pe kheti kar rahe hain they would say ki are hum to dhar kheti kar rahe hain se x village mein hai ab wo log ka ghar hai to they say ki hum y village mein kar rahe hain so this is not the process this cannot happen because the guidelines clearly says that you have to have an agreement that is lease agreement let's say you are doing in someone else's land so you need to have a lease agreement that to agreement they did not have any agreement their place of drip installation says at that particular village but when i ask them they say ki ha waha us gaon mein ho raha hai which is 8 kilometers away so that's another red flag now in some other cases abhishek says the farmers were lured into the scheme with the promise that they would get some other benefits entirely For example Abhishek found out that one company promised farmers solar panels which they needed more than the drip system they actually promise them solar and drip with 90% subsidy but they don't get solar they got drip they get the verification done so in this case the drip has of course been installed there but when i go there and find them ki aap drip par kheti kar rahe hain bole rahe humko zarurat hi nahi hai hum kyun kheti karenge isko humko mera kisan humko jhoot bol ke chala gaya ek middleman ya agent so this is a complete wastage of a very good technique which can actually be a boon for a jharkhand farmer community which is drip technology and drip technique and it's important to note that the reason why many farmers do not want the drip irrigation system in the state is because they don't know enough about it or have not been properly trained to use it let's say if there is one particular panchayat rather than choosing 50 or 30 or 20 farmers from one panchayat the agriculture department should ideally choose one or two farmers and be with them throughout one season of the farming and you know hand hold them till the farming if if the farmer community sees one a success story around them they will automatically want to include them or they will automatically want to use that technology because they seen the productivity increase but what is happening is the opposite the farmers are left in lurch there was no training given and how do the farmers are approached if you tell the farmer that you know you need to give 12000 rupees for drip ek aisa technology acha karega farmer will not give that money because that's hard and money for them until you create a success story in their own community in their panchayat humko lagta hai ek mahina pehle mila hai ek mahina pehle mila hai ha acha ek mahina ho chuka hai ha abhi tak hum to ye kab tak aap logo ko lagta hai ki ye mile aap log kab tak laga laga payega jaise direction milega hum log kaam shuru karenge direction kon dega हम लोग डायरेक्शन तो अभी तक हम लोग नया किसान लोग हैं हाँ। और पहली बार हम लोग लगा रहे हैं तो हम लोग को उतना आइडिया नहीं मालूम तो कोई तो कंपनी का लोग आना चाहिए हाँ। उस आइडिया से लगाना है हाँ। तो कैसे अपने मर्जी से लगा सकते वो बात तो सही बोल रहे हैं आप and besides this he also came across some farmers who have actually lost their crop because they did not know enough about the system here abhishek tells us about a chili farmer who produced less amount of chili after he started using the drip he is doing this by seeing the YouTube videos. He's saying हम YouTube वीडियो देख के कर रहे हैं लेकिन ढंग से हो नहीं रहा है मेरे से Now this is one of the major cause of worry because when we are talking about you know extreme weather event and climate change and every problem झारखंड had the worst ever drought in 2022 in the Kharif sowing season from June to August 15. in those two and half months jharkhand had the worst ever drought in 122 years so if we extrapolating it from there if the farmer is not being trained and he is losing hope in faith in this particular technology we are moving we are going away from a climate resilient infrastructure which is drip technology what essentially it provides and abhishek says that because of this lack of trust training and success stories the farmers do not want to enroll under the scheme because even paying 10% of the required cost is a lot of money for them and the other red flag that abhishek found out was that some middlemen and agents tried to convince farmers to pay even less than the 10% required so what they do is they don't ask for 10% of the money they say ki aap 2000 de dijiyega aap 3000 de dijiyega theek hai aapko hum ek ek do ek ek saman de now imagine if the farmer is not paying 10000 rupees who is paying on their behalf if the farmer is not paying 10% somebody is pocketing somebody is you know shelling out that amount into the entire scheme so what will happen eventually as a cascading effect the farmer will not get the entire product or the implementation will not done properly so that if it is done properly then how does the company bear the 10% cost of the farmer because farmer is not paying you also have to increase the number of beneficiaries 
and at the same time you also have to show that look farmers are adopting this technology so they ask very little amount from the farmers and they make up that that offset that loss by giving less product the quantity is being compromised the quality is being compromised and as part of our investigation we went to one karadari block where we saw that this particular community is doing farming so when we saw there that they were doing drift farming successfully i thought i imagine wow this one place where everything is happening in a way that everything is implemented efficiently but no i was wrong i was proven wrong immediately because when we asked them ki bhaiya kitne zameen pe aapka ho raha hai kheti they said 15 acres and how much land is mentioned in the papers is 28.75 acres so imagine the amount of money that the companies are pocketing now we had mentioned previously that there is a four step verification process to ensure that this doesn't happen and that the scheme actually benefits the farmers The first step was to ensure the farmers are actually interested in enrolling under the scheme and the second and the third step is to verify the land records of the farmers but abhishek says that this doesn't happen either in fact during the land verification process someone else's records were being shown and the investigation showed that the verification agents were actually in cahoots with the middlemen now i just spoke about farmer arjun singh from ingunia and choparan the farmer that agent actually made a person stand who does not belong or who does not have any farm on behalf of arjun singh now this particular agent or a verification chose between rupees 300 or 250 per unit verification versus rupees 500 5000 rupees or x amount that was given to them by as kickbacks for doing wrong verification allegedly by the company or by the middleman so step by step places after places there have been areas where the verification has not been completed properly that's number one number two the land lease agreement is mandatory for doing a verification if any farmer says that okay i don't have any land but yes i am doing farming see it's your lease this verification agent never asked for an agreement they never check for an agreement we have also information in the same land several other verification agent got several farmers got verified in the same parcel of land and he says this cannot happen without the middlemen and the government subsidiary officials in cahoots with the private companies installing these drip irrigation systems now after the investigation was published last week the jharkhand government took note of the situation and immediately launched a probe into the matter i approached uh, badal patrelek who is minister of agriculture in jharkhand and he is also a congress leader after the story appeared he read through it he immediately said to uh, agriculture secretary who is abu bakr siddiqui to sort of get form a high level committee to inquire into the our uh, findings and get them within a week so as of now the committee will be headed by a sub divisional rank level officer and uh, the inquiry has to be completed within a week and they'll go to lot of places and see how the data's the aadhaar data were taken from the farmers or how it was first or how there's dumping of products in lot of farmer houses they will look into all these things and they'll give a report back to them having previously reported on scams in the state abhishek says this yet again raises concerns about accountability and the impunity with which many government officials continue to operate I find there has been no difference in the amount of gravity that any government employee have for the accountability. I mean, they have zero respect for accountability. The impunity with which they operate. I mean, the companies with which I sought responses from, none of them replied or none of them had a conscience in saying that okay, this is a mistake and we will rectify it. Or we will see. I mean, I mean, or okay, this has been a issue and we are going to get corrected because of course they were in cahoots with the local officers and uh, this has been going on for long. This is not the first time. that an investigation has been done in micro irrigation in 2011 right after it was implemented in 2012 there was an investigation done by agriculture department only and we had access that report and we saw that how the same problem used to have an inflating the land beneficiary is not giving given the entire product people not using the micro irrigation so the state has not learned from its mistake something which has happened in 2012 an inquiry has been done but of course the agriculture department sat on the files and did nothing about it 10 years down the line the same kind of problem happens i understand that this state is a new state but compare with chatisgarh or any other place it doesn't stand anywhere in terms of governance people try but uh, generally from my four years of reporting 
I feel that there is a problem for accountability. People or the officers or the political class think that they are not accountable to public in Jharkhand, and that's the major problem. You were listening to Three Things by the Indian Express. Today's show was hosted by me, Rahel Philippos, and written and produced by Ucha Sadmin and Shashank Bhargav, who originally spoke to Abhishek. It was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone who you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can also tweet us at Express Podcasts or write to us at podcast@indianexpress.com. At